So we're going to start our bracket design in SOLIDWORKS. So we'll just go ahead and uh, we're going to start by measuring out the stock. So we know that we have a four inch piece this way. We have 2.5 this way. And then our length, we can actually make it a little bit longer because we know that we can remove material. We can take it out of that bigger block. So we're just going to start with say a four inch piece. We can always make that a little bit smaller, okay? So if this was the firewall side of our car, then we would need to come back and we would need to cut at a 20 degree angle to make that piece. Likewise, we could also look and see what it would be like if we cut at 20 degrees here. So we're just gonna start by, I don't know, we'll just put a sketch on here and we'll come back from this corner and we'll build in are 20 degrees. So our slave cylinder would actually come through here, mount, and then move up that way. So if we make it on this angle, the block may not need to be four inches long, but we'll just go ahead and we'll do a cut here, and then we can make an adjustment on this side. So we'll go ahead and cut that. And now if we change our distance, we could bring that in a little bit closer if we wanted to, make it something a little more realistic. So now we're looking at uh, two, two and an eighth, Two. Now we have a two inch block that we'll need to make this part out of. Now we need to under, we need to know where the actual mounting surface is of the slave cylinder, right? So if we look at this part, we know that we're four inches in this direction and we have a three and a half inch tab overall. So sometimes what I like to do for visualization and just to keep everything straight is I'll start a sketch and then I just take a picture and we'll go normal too. And then we can start laying out where this is going to be. Make this a little transparent so we can see it. And then we'll come through and we'll just resize it. There are some cool tools you can do here for moving and adjusting and resizing. Um, we'll just do this a little bit of the what I consider the uh, more traditional way. So what I'm gonna do is, we'll say that's good for right now. We'll lock this in the middle. I'll use some construction geometry here. We'll go from here. And this just helps me visualize where these components are gonna go. So from here, I'm just gonna do a quick offset. And we know that the overall spacing on the outside of that tab is three and a half inches. So 3.5 divided by two. And then we'll do another offset the other way. So now if I look at this picture, I can line everything up in the center and then I can drag this over. And this gives me a little bit of an idea of the size that I need to look at. So when we're looking at placement, we're looking at where the part's going to go as I design this and lay it out. I now have a little bit better visual of how everything is going to look and fit. Again, you don't have to do it this way. This is a way that I do it sometimes just so I keep in my mind where everything is going to be and how all the layouts are going to work. So if we know the outside of our tab is here, we do know that our hole centers are at two and five eighths. So let's make those symmetric. So we have those. We know the diameter of these holes are 3 8 And then we just need a hole for the center bore. So we'll come in here and we'll oversize that. So it looks like we can make it one and five eighths. So this gives us our mounting location and our holes that we need to go through this block with. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a through all. 
And so now we have where the actual mounting location is <clears throat> for the flange itself. So from the rest of this now, we just need to make the bracket so we can mount it to the firewall. We can do some cuts and reliefs, make this more of a um, cleaner looking part than just a wedge with a, a piece through it. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and let's just start by using the shell feature. We'll see what that gets us. So we'll go ahead and we'll say, well, from here, we want to do, we'll do 300. Uh, not exactly what I want. So let's edit that. We'll pick these faces. That's a little bit better. That looks a little more like a bracket we would want to use. But we need to be able to mount this, correct? So we need to be able to mount this in a way that allows us to actually put flanges on the firewall and then be able to add material to it later. So maybe making it from this direction with the material we have is not the best way to go. <clears throat> maybe we should make it the other way so we have a little bit more space in how the part's gonna look. So if you remember, right, originally we're going in the two and a half and the four, maybe we need to make this a little bit deeper and go on this side of it so we have more room for mounting, okay? And again, this is all part of the process, right? I have material that I have in the shop that I'm going to use. How am I going to make this work? So let's go ahead and remove that from the shell. We did this cut originally on this face. Let's say we want to cut it back on this face now because we want to use the four inch side versus the two and a half inch side. So let's see what happens. We'll delete that extrude. So we keep our sketch. Let's see what happens if we change the sketch plane. So let's put it on this side. Okay, you can see we have a flip, no big deal. Delete that, run it back to that side. And we'll do 20, okay. Let's flip that, so we'll change this. So now we're working in this direction. You can see because we have the picture, we now sort of have a reference where we're going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this longer than two inches. Let's, what happens if we make this Oh gosh, let's make it um, four. Okay, so we'll come back, edit our sketch. I always like to look at everything normal too. So we have a midpoint here, right? We have a midpoint here. So what we're gonna do is We'll move that, so we used our sketch expert, went through and checked a few things. So we'll move this midpoint here. You can see now if I can move it to that direction. Let's go over here. Drag our picture over to the spot just so we have it for reference again. Now, So if we look at this now, we look at a scenario where we do have a little bit more room around here, but maybe we want a little bit more than what we have, right? Because let's say we want to put some mounting holes on the outside. So we'll go through and let's make this a little bit wider than four. Let's say we want to make that six. That gives us a little bit better. Move my picture to the middle for reference. So now I have a little bit of room on the outside. I can actually make some mounting flanges. So if we take this sketch and go ahead and we cut that through. And then let's say we want to 
create a flange on the outside. So we'll just go ahead and start a sketch on the top. Do a corner rectangle. Make everything symmetrical so it's easy to make adjustments to. And it sort of fits a little bit better design style. So we'll go ahead and do a mirror. Let's say we just mirror that. Pick that guy. Let's see if we can do three quarters of an inch. And let's leave a three-eighths flange on the back. So we'll cut this through off. So now if we go ahead and we do a shell, so you want to remove those faces, pick that, pick that. That bracket looks a little bit better for our slave cylinder. Now, we're also, we also know that we, we have a half inch end mill out there, so we have a quarter inch fillet, right? So the best thing to do if you have a 0.250 radius of your cutter is you wanna do a, something similar to like a 0.260 fillet. That allows the end mill to come in and go around without stopping. It creates a little bit better finish on our part. So we'll go ahead and we'll add some fillets in there, all at 260 we know we're going to use a half inch fillet and now we're looking pretty close to our part the last thing we need to do is we do need to come in and see where we're going to be with our holes here for mounting so i have some quarter inch screws out there or bolts depending upon where how you call them so we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to do two through here so we'll go out the center so everything looks nice and symmetrical. Bring those down. Again, we'll pull one more off the center line. And we'll make these symmetric. Just so that way as we make adjustments, it works out correctly. So we'll make them a little bit tighter of a fit. Obviously, you can make them a standard dimension here. So let's say from the edge, we want that to be edge to center we'll do five sixteenths now you could do a four pattern here i think for what we're going to use i think we'll be all right with a two pattern uh, just based upon where this is going to be and what's what it's going to push at if you wanted to make that adjustment obviously we could move this up and make it a four pattern we'll just go ahead and remove the midpoint here remove that and we'll simply dimension it from the top so let's say we do 0.75 this head on so we can see where we're at that may be okay let's make this 0.5 that looks a little bit better so we'll do one more quick mirror here. So we'll just say, let's mirror those based on this. That looks a little bit better to me. Features. There we go. Now we have a bracket that actually looks like it should fit okay. We can go ahead and we would machine this part out and we know we have the stock and we have the material that we could actually make this from. Now some things I do like to do depending upon how I machine it is put some fillets on here but sometimes you can just break it with a deburring tool but this gives us what we're looking for so we'll go ahead and make it 6061 because that's what we have and we'll save this And there's our design part.